What's good, Chicago? Let's wake up and win with Don Julio and DJ Young Homie. You're locked in with WLGK Chicago. It's amazing, man. I'm blessed to be here again, too, on another Wake Up and Win Wednesday in particular on our 50th anniversary. Everybody, we have plenty of people that are going to be joining us today. Yes, sir. Along with Jasmine, who just did our entertainment report. We got my buddy Evan. Evan should be slipping on the lineup soon. Cool, cool. Let's get Evan on the line right now, actually. Let's do it. Evan. What's up, guys? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? 50 yeah. episodes. Yeah, Wild. Yeah. It's Congrats. great to have you on here, man, once Thanks, again. Man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. And now that we can able to see each other. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so no, what's, been what's been going on with you, man? Man, we're just, uh, you know, making it through quarantine, lockdown. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of artists just can't play uh, live shows, so they're kind of pivoting into building their businesses behind the scenes. So yeah, I run a company called Artist Collective and we help um, independent musicians navigate the music industry from branding to royalties to just staying on track, doing the business stuff. So it, it, it's been challenging, but it's been fun. Cool, cool, man. So anything exciting going on for the, the wintertime coming up soon? Well, we are, so normally in Chicago, we've been doing for the past like three years, we did in-person meetups. I'm big on networking. I'm big on um, connecting people. I think that Chicago in particular uh, doesn't have that enough in the music industry. So I like to kind of plug people together. We unfortunately have not been able to do that for about a year now, it seems. Um, so we are going to try out a virtual meetup where there's like breakout sessions and I'm like ho hopefully plug re redoing that just online. So that should be fun, maybe in December or something when everybody's stuck at home because it's yeah, cold. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that happening <laughs> yeah. too, my man. And uh, it's it's great too to have you on this episode in particular. I know, Evan, you're one of our first guests yeah. way back when, when we started this this journey. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I know you want to talk more about your, uh, your company, The Artist Collective, right? Yeah. I mean, what we're doing now is we are very, on, like, like I said, online based. Um, I'm very heavy in education. I want to educate artists to build their own businesses. Uh, a lot of artists I speak with are, you know, looking for investors or a record label. And that's great. But I really believe that you can build it yourself first, get that leverage so that when somebody does discover you, hopefully that happens. And you want to take that next step. You have that leverage to say, yo, here's my numbers. I'm hustling myself. I built my own team. So we do a lot of online based education. So trainings on branding, on you know, walkthroughs on what to do, because I know it can be cumbersome as an artist, like you're you're busy making the music. Like it's it's hard it's to know what you yeah, need yeah. to do. It's overwhelming. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I try to streamline that and uh help them get back to the music as fast as possible. Now correct me if I'm wrong, Evan. Um for me, the most important part of you know being an artist as that I see is branding yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that artists lack on right now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's funny you say that, that this month I'm doing my own workshop trainings for our members on branding. It's called the branding method for music business. And just to kind of give you a little peek, I am really, I really believe in building a, a values based personal brand oh, great. Um, instead of going straight to like, oh, cool, here's my logo. But like, why are you doing what you're doing? How can you connect with people who believe in that same thing? Like, do in, you in value a, in your family? Yeah, too. absolutely. Like, being able to identify what you really value as an artist and as a person will help you build strong relationships with fans, which is a long, a lifelong um, business that you could build. Definitely a lifelong business and a lifelong journey for any artist that's continuing to pursue music. Now, I know, I know there's a lot of uh, negative, you know, um, pitfalls when it comes to signing with a major label can, can you explain like well, one or two benefits maybe from staying independent um yeah i mean full control i mean essentially a record a record deal is is a bank loan yeah they, they're able to put you into their machine usually like marketing so you don't necessarily have to worry about that but essentially you're you're taking a very bad loan you could get a much better deal just going to the bank and saying, hey, here's my business plan. And they would give yeah. you a much better deal. You could take that million dollars or however much you get. And if you knew the routes to take, like I'm trying to help artists build that, you could take that money and do it yourself and get the same results. I, I think uh, too many times 
artists want to go to that record deal because that's what they see all the majors do because the, you know it's on it's on major radio and everything like that but there are other routes you can be successful and not be drake big you know what i mean yeah, so yeah, um, absolutely yeah exactly and it's not it, it, i mean independent isn't for everyone that and that's that's okay if like you get the right deal and it makes sense for you and your team like that's great but you know you're putting the cart before the horse usually and <laughs> you're right. yourself yeah no, that's definitely, I, I agree with that. I'm, I'm on board with that too. And I've always, uh, personally myself, you know, I, I maintained the independent brand because I felt like, you know, if I can't do it on my own, then I really have no business doing this <laughs> uh, out in the public's eye. But it's it's inspiring too, you know, to hear this coming out of you. Um, do you listen to Russ? Have you, have you seen his new interviews where he's trying to break down the game to other artists? Yeah, I've seen a couple. Um, yeah. I'm pretty familiar with his strategy where he was like kind of hacking the Spotify algorithm. I think for a while there, he was like releasing a song like a day. Yeah. Um, yeah. If not, it was like a week or something. And it's funny that you mentioned that too. I think that worked then. I'm not fully convinced that that strategy works for one for any for everyone and for True. two i don't know if it works anymore because the spot the algorithms change all the time it's it's, yeah. it's <laughs> ai it's it's learning all the time so if you can't you know put out produce that that music that fast with a cool marketing plan you know it doesn't have to be millions of dollars um it may not work you may not have that growth and a lot of times artists like it's not quality they're yeah. they're trying to do that Russ strategy and just put out content, but it's just like this isn't really that good. Yeah, um, no, I mean, I, me personally, I don't really, as a music listener, I don't vibe with a lot of Russ's songs, and I feel that he maybe kind of did that same thing. Where it's he, an acquired taste. You know, it's an acquired yeah. taste. Yeah, hey, exactly. I, I love what he's doing. Just as a music lover, I'm like, yeah, I like a couple songs, but it's yeah. just like kind of feels rushed. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I remember a couple years ago, maybe like three or four years ago, you know, when Russ, Russ has been around for a while, but he was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, first establishing himself, you know, we really didn't get much traffic with Russ here in Chicago, but you go to New York, you know, other parts in the East and, you know, he's huge out there, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it, it's it depends how you market yourself, depends where you market yourself as well. Right. And he's a great example that like he was selling out shows for a while, but still yeah. mainstream had no idea who it, who he was. Exactly. <laughs> so he wasn't in the eye. Like I, like I said before, like Drake big, but he was still really successful and he was making a lot of money. He has exactly. a lot of videos where he's like showing you his behind the scenes, behind the curtains, like distro kid. He's like, yo, I'm just going to show you right now. This is how much I'm making. This is how much I made the first week. Now, second week, now three months, like it started to stack up. So I, you know, props to him for like peeling back that curtain. That's what I'm all about. Like, mm -hmm. and I think people just want to like do it and say, cool, you know, you know, I'm not going to tell you how I'm doing it. And, you know, people like Russ you know, are paving the way for independence. And just like you said, you know, he's showing you what he made, but I think a lot of these artists now and these, these new artists, the new talent, they lack the budgeting skills. Oh, yeah. You know, I think that's the, the main thing. They lack budgeting skills because, you know, they, they may have a certain amount of money to begin with, but how, how do they know how to budget it? You know, sometimes these artists put so much money into these studios when you don't really need hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of studio time when you can mm -hmm. do that by yourself. You know you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. My biggest thing is music videos. Um, I'm preaching that all the time. Like you don't need Visuals. a $5,000 yeah. music video to make good content nowadays. Like the content that's working that we're putting through like marketing strategies are yeah. taken on iPhones. I mean, you can take a music video in 4K on your iPhone, yeah. edit it in Final Cut Pro all for free. And it will get just as much traffic as your $5,000 rented music video. So, exactly. you know, if you're, if you're on a budget, maybe don't do that. <laughs> maybe try to go the free <laughs> route and put money into getting the music out there instead of making it look like you're bigger than you are. Definitely, right, man. my man. Definitely. Definitely, brother. Well, man, we appreciate you coming on the show. You got any other questions for him, bros? Well, I wanted him to just, you know, uh, to shout some knowledge to the people, you know, in, uh, in one sentence. Can you can you give some advice to anybody who's up and coming and, and, and you know, curious about being in music? Yeah, I mean... I'm not sure I, this the quote isn't from me, but I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate it. Um, it takes nine to 10 years to blow up overnight. Stay consistent, <laughs> stay consistent, well keep doing what you're doing, build on it each time. Cool. Release doesn't work. Figure out why it doesn't work. Really evaluate it, build on it every time and just don't give up because you're building a, a business. And even in the first five years, your business isn't going to make money. You're reinvesting. True. So just stay True. consistent. You're right, man. You're right. Consistency. I love it. Evan, pleasure speaking to you, man. Yes, I'll, I'll shoot you a text off air, but um, 
Yeah, man, we're definitely going to get back to it. And always a pleasure having you on the show. Hey, man, Evan, before you get out of here, man, where can they find you if they want you know to get some knowledge from you or if they want to hit you up? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Um, on Instagram is AC underscore Evan. Um, the company is at Artist Collect. And you can find more information on our memberships and uh, other stuff that we, other resources we have at artistcollect.com. But thanks, oh, guys. Man, we appreciate you as yeah. always. Appreciate you again, man. It's the Wake Up Boy Morning Show. It's your boy, Don Julio, DJ Young Homie. We'll be right back. We're going to play some music. When we come back, we got Cap to drop it still. We got Tales of the Strip. We're going to be talking with Down to Earth CEO, Mr. Cordero, back then talking about some new product, as well as the top five, man. Let's do it, Chicago. It's your boy, Don Julio, Young Homie. Let's do it. Come on, bring back hyphen. Come on, bring back hyphen. Come on, bring back hyphen. I'm gonna bring back hyphen. Low waist, fat, fat, baby, tap in. Tap, tap, tap in. Diamonds dancing on your neck, better tap in. Tap, tap, tap in.